The following presentation is a gift from the team at Streamline Publishing, publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plain Air Magazine, and weekly newsletters Fine Art Today, Realism Today, Plain Air Today, and American Watercolor, and events, the Plain Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. We offer over 400 different art instruction tutorials and ultra high quality video by the world's leading artists. If you like what you see, help us support our artists and our team with your purchase. Each video aired has a special discount code for today only in the comments section with a link to the video offered. And to see everything we do, or if you want to receive notice of new releases, new products, and new events for artists, simply click the other link, which says, see everything we do. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher and founder of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. We've been here every day at 3 o'clock for you, and today is no exception. Today we have a classic. It's called Lilies with the great floral painter Hetty Moran. Hi, I'm Hetty Moran, and today I'm going to be painting a floral for you and hopefully showing you how you can paint a floral in your home. Uh, that might look very intricate, but I'm going to try to make it simple. Now, today I have a lily. I don't know what kind of lily that is. I don't know that much about flowers, actually. I just happen to like their shapes and, and their colors. Uh, and then I believe these are some spider mums. Now, uh, I did put this up with the red background. Uh, I try to think a little bit about complements, the uh, red complemented by the green. Uh, but there will be other uh, colors in there as well. Now I'd like to show you my palette. Uh, I use a titanium white and I have two here and one is a little bit cooler than the other. Indian yellow and Indian yellow deep. Cadmium yellow pale, cadmium lemon. And the next one is another brand of cadmium lemon. Cad yellow deep, cadmium orange transparent oxide red, cadmium scarlet, permanent rose, alizarin crimson, transparent medium uh, red, red lake, magenta, transparent oxide red, Windsor violet or dioxazine violet. There's a little bit of cobalt blue here, French ultramarine blue, indigo, Ashiva's ice blue, sap green, two different brands there, green gold, and next to that is terra verte. Now, when I start this painting, as most of my paintings, I start with transparent colors only. Uh, the reason for that, uh, the transparent colors stay beautifully clean. They also give me some really nice subtle grays. Uh, I will cover the entire canvas in my transparent colors. Before I go into any opaques, I'll be able to check my composition and my colors. So I'm going to get started here. Take a large bristle brush. And obviously this lily is going to be pretty darn important in my composition. And I'm aware of the fact that, that it is a cooler white than any of the other whites in there. And I might adjust that on the canvas as it needs to be adjusted. Most white flowers have a lot of yellow green in them. And I think you can see it in the center of that lily, and you can certainly see it in the spider mums, how yellow they are in the center. So I'm going to take both of my Indian yellows and I'm going to add a little sap green to them. And you're going to say, well, that's not the color of the, of the lily. Yeah, I know, but it's in there. And this is how I want to start. Now, working from that, I'm going to go over to these spider mums and see where they're placed. Now I'm going to put just a little bit of this transparent oxide orange into my mixture. That'll make that a little bit darker. And I have another spider mum in here and I have one in here. Now as I'm starting to see how this composition is going to work already, I see that I'm not too crazy about that arch. So I'm going to probably lower this spider mum a little bit. And I'm going to push this lily down just a tad. Now I'm not going to change anything until I get the greens in because there's quite a bit of the dark green. 
Um, now I know a lot of you really feel that bugaboo about something being in the middle, but you know what? Something's got to be in the middle. And when I have this lily here, I'm going to paint it in such a way that it does not look like a headlight coming right at you. But it's in a prime location on the canvas. And I don't want to move it over in either direction just to make it out of the center. That's one of those rules that you're aware of, but you don't follow it like a slave. Now I'm going to take the sap and I'm putting some alizarin to tone it. Now I'm putting just a little bit of terp or terpenoid. Now see that looks a little bit too green. I want something that's neutral. I want a neutral dark here. And I bring that green right up into, into my flowers. I am not drawing. In case, in case you're wondering, there is no line drawing here. I don't do a line drawing. I put in shapes of color. I think of these flowers as shapes. I don't think of them as a lily or a daisy or a leaf. I think of them just as shapes. And believe me, that will help you so much in your own painting if you forget about what the object actually is and just think of it as a shape and put it down as a shape. So this is kind of a, you know, a jump in and hold your breath kind of way to start a painting, but uh, you do get a spontaneous look to your work if, if that is what you uh, are wanting. Now on this side, the uh, uh, eucalyptus there is a little bit bluer. It's a blue-green. So I'm adding just a, a little bit of ultramarine to that. It's hardly enough that you can notice it, but... I'll put a little bit more in there. So you see, when you go out to do a landscape and you squint to see just the big shapes, well, I'm squinting here. And so what I'm seeing is just an abstract green shape right here. I'm not seeing all of these individual uh, leaves. I'm just putting it in as a big shape. That makes it much more doable. If you're thinking about hundreds of leaves and, uh, and things going on, it can become a little daunting. Now I'm taking alizarin and I'm going to add a little bit of the blue to it. And on this side, I'm going to go right into that green. And I'm going to push some of that red right on into where that, where that lily is as well. And I'll put a bit more of the blue in to get it even deeper on that shadow side. Now my focal area is going to be right in here. Um, it tends to be right in that area quite a bit. I feel comfortable with it, uh, with the light coming uh, from the left, the upper left. Uh, I kind of like that. Now I've got a couple of cherries laying on the table here, and that is going to represent where those cherries are. So now I'm just going to wipe off my brush, and I'm going to go back into the sap green and some of the Indian yellows, exactly what I used up here. And I'm going to start to find that area of foliage that's on the table. Now I'll wipe that brush and where that other lily is going to go I'll just take my paper towel and wipe that just a little bit because it's not going to be a really bright flower. It's not going to be in competition with this one. 
so I'll just wipe it uh, a little tad. Uh, now we have a, a really nice shadow that comes down off of the top of this table. And so I'm going to take some indigo, which is a transparent that, um, that is kind of nice. Now I'm going to put a little of my red mixture, just a little bit, in there. And need a little turp here. What I'm trying to do when you work transparently and you're putting in these colors, I want to use these colors. I'm going to scrub other paint on top and I want what's underneath to help me achieve the color that I'm after. If it's too runny, if it's too wet, if there's too much turp in there, that's not going to work. Your brush is going to slip and slide. Uh, but you also need to have pigment on there. So it's a fine line between having it scratchy and thin and having it runny. Um, so I do work at that to make sure that that it doesn't get too dry or too wet. And I know that's really dark, but you know in oil painting we go from dark to light. And we also go from big shapes to small shapes. Now right here, right now, I have my first big shape, which are all the positive elements that I'm seeing up there. That is that first big shape. Now I see it here on the canvas and I can see that I have negative spaces uh, that are not uniform, they're interesting. I might add a little green coming out on that side just so that it, it was not too similar to this side. And you have to remember that when your viewer comes to look at your painting, if it's hanging in a gallery or on a wall somewhere, their first glimpse of it will probably be at a distance. It's this big abstract shape, the first one, that needs to be interesting. Not uh, so symmetrical that it becomes boring, but an interesting shape. So before you get the background and the table in, you're able to see that shape clearly. And that's what I'm studying right now. Because when I start to put that background in, this is kind of going to disappear. Now I do have what we call a, well, it, they call it, the manufacturer calls it, a color shaper. And it is a rubber nibbed um, thing here. And if, uh, if you feel like you really want to know exactly where things are, you can use that to draw an outline of or where you want these things to uh, to be if you need that. Personally, I like to, uh, I like to just have it, uh, just the color, and I work into it without any uh, edges or perimeters that I have to follow. Okay, now one of the things in putting this up that I really enjoyed was that there's a, a red vase and then there's a red background, and then I put a piece of bright red fabric back there and then I have the cherries. Um, and of course the, um, I don't know what those things are called, the stamen or uh, on that lily, those are in the red family as well. And so I thought that was, that was kind, of, uh, kind of fun. Now I'm going to fill in the rest. And I'm going to take my alizarin again. And this time I'm going to put some of that transparent oxide red in there. And I'm going to put a little bit of ultramarine blue in there. I want to get a color that isn't too intense to begin with. And because these spider mums are, have all of these long little um, petals sticking out, there's a lot of holes around them. So I'm going to have to get that background so that I can put those little things in after. Okay, I might even go a little bit darker. I'll take some of this dark that I had down here and I'll put some of some of that red into it and make it even darker back into here. What 
what I'm doing here um, is I'm setting the stage for the lights, for the bright colors. Uh, the bright colors need the toned down colors to shine against, the contrast. We need that contrast between the light and the dark and the bright and the not so bright. Bit more terpenoid on here. Now I'm going to stick a little bit of permanent rose in here as well because that definitely is more of a rosy color uh, than is the, uh, the vase. So I'll put some of that in there too. And notice how I'm going right into all the other elements. Um, what I like when I paint is a, a loose style um, where the flowers are coming out from the background and there is a certain amount of depth that one can achieve by having soft edges and pulling just some parts of the painting out. Now you see I'm going to kind of be losing pretty much the big shape here of, of my setup, but that's okay because I know where it's at and I did want all of these colors to to mingle together. Now I'm going to put just a little red into that shadow. I'm going to put a little red into that where that lily is as well. And you might ask yourself, well, do you ever get into trouble with this? And absolutely I do. When I paint, I'm fearless. Uh, there's, there really isn't anything that you can't fix with an oil painting, either with a knife or uh, a painting knife, not a butcher knife although that's not a bad idea sometimes, uh, you can always fix it. And it's always better to be bold and to do a little bit more. You can always knock it back. Uh, so don't be too terribly careful and concerned about edges at this point or making things perfect. Perfect is really overrated, I think. Plus, it's something you can't really achieve. Now I'm going back into the Indian yellows and I'm putting a little bit of some of these colors that I already had on my brush. And this is for the light of the cloth. Now the reason that I'm putting that in dark is because I don't really, my painting is not going to be about that corner there, down there. And so I'm putting it in dark to begin with, and I'm in control of how light that cloth will eventually be. And because this color is transparent, it's clean, and it's thin. So it will, it will work. Okay, now sometimes uh, at this point I will also take a knife and make sure that I don't have too much thick paint anywhere. I don't want it to be thick at this point. I want it to be thin. And I consider this dark. This is a dark, dark underpainting. Okay, now I think I'll take a little bit of a smaller brush here. And in the center of this uh, lily, it gets kind of deep down in there. Now, I'm not seeing uh, red, per se, in there, but I am seeing green. But I'm going to take the transparent oxide orange and some of the uh, sap green, and I'm just going to push that in there. I want to get some depth for when I put the, the white shapes on to show that they are coming out from a deep center. And I'm going to take white with a little bit of cad yellow pale on it. I have a warm light on this setup, so there will be a warm color in most of the lights. Now 
wipe the brush off again. Now you'll notice I'm starting right smack in the middle of my focal area here. And I'm pressing that brush down so that I'm picking up colors that are underneath. Uh, lilies are one of the few uh, flowers that you kind of have to be aware of the fact that there are six petals. Uh, generally, if you, uh, like, I mean, nobody's going to count all the petals on those spider mums there. Uh, so most of the time that doesn't really matter that much, but on a flower that definitely has uh, six petals, I am aware of where those, those petals are. I may not uh, describe them in equal, uh, equal importance, but but I do make sure that there are six. Now I'm using a little of the ice blue now as well. And, and this paint is still rather uh, thin. I'm, I've not gone into any, any really thick paint. It's just that it is now opaque. And you see, the fact that I'm picking up the green under that petal is just fine because uh, those flowers, those petals are, are, are thin and the color of what's underneath is bound to come through. And so if I took, if I took and mixed uh, three values of white and then went in to paint that flower, it might look just like that flower, but it wouldn't have really any character because it wouldn't have those colors that it's being affected by. And so having this transparent underpainting really helps you to get colors uh, that are more natural in your, in your flower. Uh, most flowers also are kind of a cup shape. There aren't many flowers that are straight like this. They tend to be a little bit of a cup. And so I'm always aware of that, uh, that cup then facing one way or another. I, I don't want one that's looking straight at me, but I'll turn it a little bit, and it is a cup. So with that cup shape, well, it's more in shadow in the, in the center. Now, this is another thing. When you have a flower with a center, I turned this so that this was not looking straight at me. And I wanted that center to be a little bit off center. It makes it more interesting. Okay, now I'll go from there and I'll find the beginning of this uh, spider mum up here. And I have my same whites, and I put a little bit of ice blue and some more yellow in there. And I'm looking at where this is in relationship to that. And in actuality, it's directly over it, so I probably will just move it uh, just a little tad. You know what we have to remember? A landscape painter goes out, and he'll move a mountain, he'll shove a tree somewhere, or he'll eliminate a tree. Just because we put the setup together, doesn't mean that everything in that setup is going to be painted. Sometimes we don't know until we start to paint it that something could be in a better spot. Uh, it would work better in a diff little different direction. So that's why I moved this over just a tad. Now all of these gazillion little thingies here I'm just going to indicate. I'll worry about some of the actual uh, stems later. I just want to find where everything is. And you know, when you start a painting, be prepared that every painting you do is not going to be a good one. And I don't care how good the artist is, they all make bad paintings. Doesn't mean they're a bad person. Not all canvases are meant to be framed and hung on the wall. But when you do a painting, you're a better painter at the end of your painting session than you were at the beginning. And if your painting wasn't all that good, you've probably learned much more 
than if it just flowed off your brush really easy. So that's something to think about. Get some of that dark in, about in there. Take some more of the ice blue. And what I'm painting basically is just the impression of the shapes that I'm seeing up there. Uh, no real detail. I don't want the detail until I'm sure where I want it. I'll get back into this, and there's quite a bit of ice blue that I'm using now. Now I'm going to take some of my uh, cadmium scarlet and I'm just going to mix it into some of the other reds that I already have. Now I know there's a lot of shadows on this particular uh, vase right in here, but I don't think I'm going to be putting those in. I'm going to keep some of those on that side. You can easily get too busy if you start putting in too many cast shadows. Now I'll go back into my green and I'm going to take the sap and I'll mix it right into this dark red that I had from before. And I'll just start to find a little bit of that edge right there. And then this one actually gets kind of a funky little curve to it. Now the next thing in my, as I'm working here, I'm going from area to area as it relates to what's next to it. Uh, when I'm painting this lily, I would not jump down to this one because I want to make sure that I get the spacing between here so that it, uh, it falls in a natural uh, progression the way I'm, uh, I'm kind of seeing it. Now on this lily that is coming down off the the table, uh, I'm going to take the same mixture I have. I'll add a little bit of yellow to it. And I'll get more yellow as I'm working into the center of that that flower and see this one I'm being much looser with than I've been with this one uh, so far. You know the thing is if um, if I started this and I really worked hard on this lily and got everything just the way I wanted it and then as the painting is progressing I think well it should have been bigger or it should have been a little bit higher or lower or to the right or to the left 
well, if I put all that work into that lily, I'm not going to want to move it. And so I let the painting progress at all over at about the same rate of completion. And then there is a bud comes out there. And you know, if you could see that, there's some absolutely gorgeous grays that happen there because of what's underneath. It's because of what I put on there before. Those transparent colors are so beautifully clean that when I then put this lighter uh, white on top or the yellow, uh, it creates these uh, mid-tones that, that are very subtle and, uh, and I think quite beautiful. Now I'm going to go a little deeper into the center of that flower again. Now I'm going to take some of the ice blue and I'm going to take a little of that green gold and some of these other colors that I have here. And I'm going to pull that leaf across like that. Now, I didn't see it that well, so I'm going to put some of the yellow that I had before on my brush and I'm going to do it again. Well, that's Hetty Moran and Lilies. It's a classic, and you can find it at lilyartvideo.com if you want the full-length video. And there's a special discount code for you today only in the comments section. Just look for it and apply it when you check out. I want to remind you we have a terrific video. It's called 97 Amazing Painting Secrets from the World's Best Artist. And you can get it for free, even though it's a $100 value. And it's two hours long. Just go to 97tips.com. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Eric Rhodes.